What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing today? Good. Doing Tito, fantastic. What's up, man? All right, not too bad. I'm glad it's our Wednesday thing. I look forward to it more like, more than most things. I'll be honest with you. Um, knowing that we're going to get to hang out and talk, and you know, I, since we've had all this time to really ponder about what we want to talk about, this just so happened to fall upon us, right? I know that um, both of you guys have seen it. I've seen it. I think between the three of us, we've seen it five times which is pretty impressive. So um, today we're actually going to be discussing the movie Soccer Town USA. And another thing about that actually is um, Paolo and I got to meet Tom McCabe uh, when we went to the Princeton Soccer Conference. If you guys remember that back in, um, was it December? I believe. I think it was December. So um, when we went back there, we met, we met Tom McCabe. He was talking to us about his project. And sure enough, we see that the project goes live and I jump on it and... Uh, here we are. That's what we're going to be talking about, guys. So, um, welcome. How's everything been? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Can't complain, but the world seems crazy. And I don't, I don't know about. I know. I know that the answer to this question. I think we're all missing soccer. Like it's getting worse and worse. The longing. The so when you of, saw this movie, when you saw oh, this man. movie, it kind it of it was like filling a. If it was like filling a gap of like, oh right, soccer or something I haven't seen yet. And then it, as soon as the movie ends, it's like, all right, back to this. Back That's to why you soccer. have to watch it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> just have it on loop now, and I just sit and stare at it. Made me angry. There it is. Made me angry, dude, because he's right. I just wanted to play. I miss it so much, dude. The way that they talked about the, the street playing on Winter Stays yeah. On. Uh, what color are you wearing today? That uh, kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, man. I had I TNF just, vibes all Everything over about that. it, dude. Everything. But they might as well have just talked about TNF the whole time. That's what it felt like. Yeah. It was incredible. You and know, that's, I think, one of, that's, one, of, that's one of the things. That, that's one of the beauties about these kind of movies is we're able to relate with it on a personal level because that's what we do. I mean, as soccer players, we see these kind of movies and it just, it takes us back and transports us to things. Um, right now, right before we got on, you had a clip of uh, the Corvette of Santiago when he goes into the neighborhoods, right? Remember that? Did you guys ever see the movie Bella back like maybe 15 years ago? No. So that movie what had a soccer tone to it. The guy was just signed a contract with the professional team. And as he's leaving and like after signing and you know, his life is made, he's good to go. He buys a new yeah. car. And before he goes out, he goes out to go play with, I think, Real Madrid. Um, he ends up hitting somebody with his new vehicle and he goes to jail. And that movie is about that. Oh, so yeah. when I saw that Corvette scene of him driving through like that, those brick brownstones, it literally took me back to a different scope even right i mean the whole soccer thing was i was immersed but then i saw that and it just it, it hit up on a lot of cool cues yeah so, i was taking notes during it like for this right the kind of prep like i don't want to forget what are things i want to say what was something cool i saw and i was just like i couldn't write fast enough and i realized i was almost like rewriting out the whole documentary <laughs> which is i did that i did right? the same thing i was it writing was so i was good. writing all the so quotes many things. i got notes all over yeah, yeah, there were so many things they said, and I was just, could that resonated? You know what I mean? Like yeah. things players were saying when they're re recollecting playing as kids, and how they were just playing that pickup, how they were approaching games. All of it was like just something I wanted to write down. It was so well done. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. No, I, I felt like is. Yeah, actually. So I was gonna say, um, why don't we do this, guys? We pick our top three favorite things that we enjoyed about the show. And then from there, we kind of, each one describes what they're going to be saying. And then we talk about it. Okay. Like the sound of that. So, Paulo, you, you, were, you, were, you were talking to us about, uh, you know, you have your notes and you, were, you, were, you just finished your thought. How about you tell us uh, what's, what's one of your favorite things about the movie? The clip you know, or the I'll feeling actually, or what is I'll it? I'll actually, there's a lot of things, but I'm, I'm going to start just the way they started the movie. I'm going to start at the beginning. Because there's something that I thought was fascinating in the beginning. And it's talking about like early 1900s all the way to the 1950s. And the level of soccer love that was already there. Going down to World Cup in Uruguay. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even know this history. You know, you, I, come from, I came from Italy. So to, I have the same notion that they say in the movie in Italian 90. Like who are these guys? The America that came and played. Like, I had that, right? It, 
going into this movie. And before we're even anywhere in that century, they're talking about, you know, all these players coming off from uh, from boats and they're talking about this World Cup and their best striker is sitting there going, they didn't even, he didn't even go because he was like, what is this World Cup? I'm not even, what is this tournament? Is it even going to be a thing? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. a be- one of the best strikers didn't go because he didn't even know what this world he, he was company. opening up his business i think is what they said yeah right he, started, he opened up a <laughs> barber shop or something like that and i'm like this is insanity and then he goes on to, they're interviewing all these old guys and it's just really cool to listen to what they're saying and one of them goes every ship that came in you looked for two things work and soccer and then essentially if you're irish you play with the irish guys you play with your ethnicity so he was like the world cup we were playing a world cup every week and I'm yeah. like, wow, how yeah. cool is that? It's true. So like, yeah. he, you know, he pulled me into me. This history, this little like history nugget that it starts off with, that yeah. it basically well, is showing the U.S. was building a soccer culture in a time before we even MLS, you know, World Cup '94 and all that it wasn't even. It was figment of people's imagination. I actually, I remember the date, right? It said USA and Canada had a game in 1885, mm-hmm. ten years before soccer went to Brazil. Could you imagine that? So the right, history yeah, of soccer right. yeah. here is super rich. And I think that, you know, in getting to know Tom McCabe, I assume that that's how it was going to be because he is the, the president of the the, uh, the, yeah. the SASH, right? The soccer uh, the soccer club that, that exists. So I think that um, he's a historian by, by trade. This story resonated heavily. And you're talking about how, you know, these dates, 1885, USA versus Canada, and, you know, people coming in and being immigrants. I think that that was uh, one of the, you're right, one of the more impressive aspects of, yeah, of the movie. Yeah, it, it's, it's really neat. And obviously me, myself, being an immigrant, like resonated with a lot of this kind of history, part of history, immigrant and soccer love, right? And like even when, they, I'll get a, not to get ahead, but like even when Tab Ramos first gets introduced in the movie and he says, of all the countries in the world, why do we have to go to the one that doesn't play soccer? And I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah. But like he made something it's, of uh, it. Like it's so cool. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of this was he had me hooked in the beginning. Yeah. Paulo is right literally on, taking all the words out of my mouth, by the way. They're, yeah, no, I, like, he literally saying he, all the he best brought up Tab Ramos, and I'm over here like, holy shit, okay, well, there goes the story that I was going to develop, but thank you. So, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, that's what you guys yeah. get for making me go first. <laughs> well, I got to say, for you're just, right, we're right. My, one of my favorite... One, <laughs> that's, true. that's true. But one of my favorite parts, I think, has to be um, just the name of the movie itself, the sockumentary, I keep calling it. It's yeah. Soccer Town USA. Just it just like every town was like Soccer Town USA. It didn't matter where you were from, right? Like how much the movie related to my life growing up. I mean, they were obviously like ten years before me, but like right. I remember everything. I remember that 1990 World Cup. I remember playing with just my friends. It was just pickup. There was no organized soccer. I tell you, I mean, we've talked about this before. It was just, you learn more, you learn more about winning and losing by the time you're 10 than yeah. any other time in your life. And you're right. You, you mentioned it earlier. I mean, we were talking about it offline, uh, off air, you know, but Tony Mueller, man, I mean, you just, you gained so much of respect. Like, I didn't know he was the leading goal scorer in the state. Right, His senior year, How and wild he was, was that? and he was like an all-American goalkeeper, one of the yeah. top goalkeepers in the world. I mean, in the world, in the in the country, ended up going to Virginia, and didn't even play goalie his senior year. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. and and crushed it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, scored nice goals. Had that flowing mullet, mullet? That everyone wishes they had. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I gained a lot of respect for watching them because seeing them as friends and like that camaraderie and growing up hardened through Kearney and like sticking together through his loyalty, you just immediately like bonded with them as soccer players. Uh, and yeah. they did. Well, Tab, Tab and to be honest, I didn't even know the, that Tab crossed the crossed over. He was from Harrison. He played next door, yeah. so he he was actually kind of like a traitor almost in a way. <laughs> I mean, but he, but he knew that he knew where, there was he knew where the best players. soccer was. He knew yeah, where it was. was. I was gonna say I didn't actually know that about them. That them three came out of the same town. I watched the '94 yeah, World Cup, and that was the first tough. World Cup that really I remember. So when yeah. it goes back and it's I'm learning about this stuff, it's it was really cool. I enjoyed that. But um, all right, well, 
Nice, Sagatan USA. I agree, Frank. I think Sagatan that seeing USA. that name was. Uh, I, I felt a lot of things of El Paso, and I'm when I'm seeing that right. And um, you're right. You said you know soccer town. I mean El Paso's got its history, and th watching this really made me think. I know the history of El Paso more so like my generation and the one before me, but I don't know. You know, if I'm going back to the '70s, the '60s, I know we had like national championships when it came to collegiate stuff with uh, with UTEP and the and the team that they had. So I mean, it's like I know that existed, but and I know the players that were on it. But before that, where they came from, where they well, I mean, it, I w I'm going to start learning more about it. So that's one of the things that motivated me. So you say Soccer Town USA, and I think immediately, you know what, you related to it, I related to it, Paulo related to it, and that's I think one of the unique things and the cool things about this movie. Um, so I got you, Paulo, one. Franco, I got one. For me, the the thing that really uh, resounded with me, and I think one of the, among the heaviest things, being the king of the court, man. That for me, uh, he they literally said you would go and test your skills every week, right? Or every day, I'm saying. So th th they had a vibrant street soccer game uh, where everybody would go and meet up. And then you get to test your skills and you get to see who really lives up to their name. And this is across age groups, right? I mean, you show up at 10, you're going to want to start getting in at 12. You know, you're going to be playing mm -hmm. kids that are older than you. So you, it shows character that, that you're able to step up to these games. And it's reminiscent of kind of what I remember growing up in. It's just you're playing soccer three times a day. You're growing up and that's all you're really doing. It's like before school, you're playing soccer. During lunch, you're playing soccer. At PE, it's like free play, and everybody goes to gravitate to play soccer. And then afterwards, you got your soccer games and practices and all that kind of yeah. stuff going up. So you it know, was like we were always, gotta, always just competing you, and competing you know, and in and out and fighting. Listen, watching that part made me think of you specifically. One, the, the, the competitive level, the way you would describe you growing up playing soccer. And I mean, obviously... I had the connection to Franco and TNF and the organization and what they do. There's no refs and all that, but the competitive drive that Tony Milo was talking about that's forms there. Frank, I told, I told Tito that that whole, like the five aside is what builds you. It builds a character that can't be taught, you know, at, at a young kid at age, you already had this competitive mode mo to keep going. M m I didn't have that growing up. So I was telling how much I envied watching this in the documentary, and I envied knowing Tito did this. Like, this was his life, was like this. And then it wasn't until us and S.C. Shelton and Franco, you do this TNF, which is pick up six on six, winner stays on. And it, it's made me so much of a better soccer player in my 30s is when I did this. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It still, it just works. And he talks about that working. And Tito's mentioning how, like, yeah, it shaped him as a child. Totally makes sense. I, I lived it. I can say it, it works at any age. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see how it kind of comes out. I mean, so Miola was saying that that was the most competitive he's, he's been around in a long time. And to be honest, that that's, that's a, a lot of where my soccer was formed was playing these games and pick up and playing against people that were three, four, five years older than me. And then, you know, kind of getting nervous and then uh, wanting to play. And they, I was watching these scenes that you're showing right now, Frankie. And holy shit, man, that, that ball, the ball that we played with looked oh, like that. Yeah. Even. Look at those so TNF it was just colors. A of like, yeah. <laughs> Come on, look at them. Orange, right? white. These guys were smart, man. They knew. They, they knew. knew. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm getting at is this was just, and this this is nice. Like, we play on, like, black tops. Yeah. We play, like, on cement, and we play, like, on hardened, turt, like, grass, cause, or dirt, because that's just how it is. Yeah. So it... Everything kind of stemmed from that. And this right here was uh, something that I wish every soccer city, or wish every city in general had. Had. And something yeah. that I'm just missing dreadfully right now. Unorganized soccer. You know, unorganized soccer is what's really going to... Organized, save, but it's, it's unorganized gonna save, at the same time. It's going to save um, the coronavirus cure. You know, it's, gonna, it's literally the cure. We have to... At some point, we got to meet at one of these streets. Look at these courts. These don't even exist in Connecticut. These street courts and these little five-a-side fields, man, right. they don't exist. And it's it's shame, man. And I think that's what that's what almost like that. That's what I mean when I say I like it upset me. It was because, you know, like uh, we I, I would go down to my church. We all rode our bikes. Me, my brother, uh, from Anthony Fabrizio, Jose Dioria, Joe Dioria, every everybody that I knew in the Bridgeport area would get on their bikes. We'd ride to St. Margaret's Shrine, which is a church in Bridgeport. And there was a grass field, and we would play there, and the goals would be cinder blocks. 
on either side of the grass field. And that was where I grew up playing soccer. You know, we play, we'd ride our bikes to Uncle School, which is all the way down in Fairfield because there was a goal. And we drove all the way down there, rode our bikes all the way down there just to play. Yeah. It was like miles away, just like they did. You know what I mean? Your practice was, there was no soccer moms back then. You weren't getting driven anywhere. <laughs> that was literally in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. He said there was no soccer moms back then. And it's true, man. There wasn't. Uh, it was just. I didn't experience that, awesome. Frank, until I spent the summer in Italy. So I had friends all around me. All they wanted to do was play soccer. And we would build soccer fields. If it wasn't one, we would ride bikes or go on scooters to go to a soccer field every day just to play soccer. We're yeah. here. I grew up. It was just no one around me. There were no friends close by that played. I had the soccer field across the street from my house, played by myself. You know what I mean? Unless yeah. it was a game or practice. So mm-hmm. I didn't have that. That's why I envied it so much. And that guy, that that guy, Mike O'Neill, that was there, like calling everybody. Pinky. This is the color shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Pinky. Yeah. This is the color shirt. I'm like, oh my goodness, that was their Frankie. Oh well, yeah. There's always there's yeah. got to be one. There's got to be somebody. Do, this, guys, somebody's got to do the hard work. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I would just I would just take multiple shirts and then uh, play it's with. It's not working if you love person. it though. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was great though. I like because yeah, I, I, like, I would. The thing is, I would always, I would always, I wouldn't show up by myself though. That's the thing. Like I would show up with like two other friends. Yeah, you like, had to. You, know, you had to show obviously. up with a team. Remember, uh, Hark- you go Harksy by yourself, was like, I mean, I- Harksy was like, "Yo, guys, what color are we wearing?" Because we wanted to make sure that we ran the court. You didn't want to lose because you didn't know when you'd be able to get back on. And I think that's part of what like the Street FC is doing. You know, like that. They have like yeah. different leagues. They have like a beginner league, like a, a, a yeah, master league or something. So it's it's pretty interesting how they have it set up. It's cool, but yeah, I, I know. I just, I actually, I've been wanting. Playing, to, I've been meaning man. to go out. I, mean, to do I miss check it so out. much, man. And, and this just it reminds me of it so much. You know, it was such a good yeah. such a good timing. I mean, everything, the production of it, everything about it is just so good, man. The personalities, the interviews, they're just dude. How about that? That the Carney, the the Carney Army, you know the who is that your number two, Frankie? Is that your number two? You get to start number two. I get to start number three. So, your number two is the Carney Army. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, sure, hell yeah. I'm gonna talk about it because they were, they basically started that you know becoming a fan of soccer in the United States, man. Following the national team and everything. The I remember going to high school games and being heckled. Yelled at, dude. People calling me like, the, you know, just like they were making fun of Pearson. Double zero, you're a zero. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that, that dude. That stuff, dude. Don't you remember? I mean, my dude, games were games were postponed because my father and my brother and my uh, someone else's father, brother, or uncle had to leave the field. I'm not condoning, you know, like vulgarness or like abuse towards ref. I'm not saying it, but like. That's just how it was. Like so, when they try to like take that out of the game, they're taking the history out of soccer almost in a way. They're taking the spirit. Yeah, but see, that's, it's that's bad, a, dude. It's bad. No, no, no. no it's bad. I, dude, I remember like, getting yelled but, at, and they would say, they would say, "Break that dude's leg! Break that dude's leg!" Yeah, and that was the yeah. nice stuff, dude. Because there was other stuff yeah, that yeah, came with yeah, a lot yeah, of baggage. Dude. Oh, so yeah. being 12, dude, seen- 13, 15, and hearing this stuff, it it puts a chip on your shoulder, which. I think that these guys coming out of Carney had a chip, and that's why the U.S. national team was the way that they were, because they had that grit that you don't get if you don't have that yes. chip. Is that you, is that yours? Is that your second? That is my second. That's why I introduced Ooh. it that way. I like yes. it because I, I really like that too. I have something to say after you're done on top of your your. Am, your I, still on, am I still on one? You've only got one. You go. Next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way it first. was is you went first, then Frankie, oh, no. then me. Then it's Frankie, then me, then you, and then it's gonna be me, then you, then Frankie. Bam. That's just the that's just the ba bam thing to do, man. Come on. Yeah. All right. So yes, for me, <laughs> it's the on. grittiness. Go on, go on, you know. Yeah, it's the gritty. <laughs> You'll learn about it. It's competition. <laughs> the grittiness, man. It's the the U.S. national team. In I have written here. Look at that. What game did they have to play? You can't see it because of this blur feature apparently that they have. But what game did they win to qualify for the World Trinidad Cup? And Trinidad and Tobago. What game did they lose and recently? I was going to bring that up. The I balls, the grit. That is what I'm talking about, man. You That grit that is uh-huh. set up when you know you're going to somewhere and you got to win. And you're you're going with players that aren't professional players. These guys aren't the players that are getting paid the way that they're getting paid nowadays. They're not, the leagues were nowhere near as organized. We were bringing players from top teams in the world 
and we don't beat a team like Trinidad Tobago. And I'm not nothing to put down Trinidad Tobago, but what I'm saying is. 1990, you got these three kids coming out of Carney, which helped mold the team. I mean, don't get me wrong. They still had Kobe Jones, Ernie Stewart, Alexi Lalas, Marcelo Balboa. I could name off all those people because that was like when I started saying, I want to follow the USA. So yeah. they go and they beat Trinidad and Tobago. And it was a matter of that's, that's the kind of stuff that we're missing now because it's not around. And they said it in the movie. The kind of players that come out of these kind of places are the ones that the, that that kind of get the furthest, right? I mean, you see Messi coming out of a hard area, Ronaldinho coming out of a hard area. I mean, any most of these players that have come that 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 are at that level have come out of tough places. I mean, I, I, you can name off most of these people. Ibrahimovic, he's got the chip on his shoulder. Oh Look yeah. Look at this guy, dude. I mean, all I'm saying is these guys have that, and they had that going into the 1990s, something that they knew nothing about in 2018, man. So that's my number two, the greediness coming out of this group. I don't know if what's to say afterwards. I think, Frankie, you had something to say, but Paulo, what's going on? I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? I don't know if it blends a little too much with I'm the same away from, thing. I'm going to wait for Paolo. I want Paolo to say I want Paolo to say his second favorite part of the movie, but I want to go back to what you were saying about the Trinidad and Tobago because you brought up a very 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 good point, man. And um I I just want to ask you a question and want to know your opinion because that was your favorite part. So Paolo, please tell us to let us know what your second favorite part of the of the movie was. Oh, it was when um Santi was signed for Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. dude Would you so, fall asleep or something? What the hell happened? <laughs> did you plan he this? Did you like plan this? Twenty to minutes. This? Go, Paolo. Yeah, which move now? So I w- one. Th- <laughs> yeah, I did. So to be honest, I, I got a few. I'm trying to think what to pick. Um, but I'll, I'll say if we go through like quotes and stuff, I got a couple. But when they talk about the collapse, like watching the collapse of the NESL, the Cosmos, oh. right? Sad. Like we've heard of it, like I've you know read a little bit about it before. Like seeing it now as a part of this uh, documentary, and just thinking about it again, like that was here, right? Playing, building, and it collapsed. And I read a comment recently online about that, saying if that hadn't collapsed, we'd be celebrating the 50th anniversary of professional soccer here in the U.S. two years ago, like. That's the pedi- that's the that's the time it takes to like cement uh, history in, of a league and, and all that. And it was you might be following the ML the NASL if it's been around for that long, right? I mean, exactly, probably. Exactly. I mean, I mean, just think, just think how much could have happened in all that time, and it just collapsed. It was it that to me it was like it was like a bummer to see happen. And I'm sure there's reasons. I'm actually I told myself I wrote a note to like research further why the collapse was there so I feel really bad I don't actually know why it collapsed I'm sure there's lots of reasons but at least the main ones but watching that happen was like really sad the non- so it's like cool at the, yeah it was cool at the end that it you know MLS started and these guys came back to to like no I'm gonna go there and I wanna build it I wanna build soccer in the US like they, they did it they did it when they beat Trinidad Tobago they made a name for themselves they went to Italy made a name for themselves for, for the US not for themselves really for the US Played in '94, made a name for the U.S., came back, started MSL, uh, the MLS. Like that to mm-hmm. me was the most powerful point of this entire document. Guys playing in the streets and outlived the NASL and rebuilt professional soccer. Like that's monumental, man. It was a really cool part of the movie to watch. Spoiler alert, I guess at the end. Huh? <laughs> no, but I think people knew that the MLS was created. <laughs> You're right, though. The non. Do you want to talk about what he just said? Because I got a lot to say about what he said. Yeah, definitely, dude. The non-American soccer league. I wish I saw more of it. The only, the only thing I know about the NASL really is like what I hear, um, like what you see on TV vaguely. You hear like stories about the Cosmos, but like recently, I think in the last like ten years, I've actually followed the Cosmos more now than I did. Like, I know more about the Cosmos in the last decade than I do about, like, when they first existed, when Pele was on it. But the fact that they had some of the best players in the world, like Beckenbauer, Pele, um, uh, Canalia, dude, they had some of the best players ever playing on their team, dude. It was incredible, you know? So, Mm -hmm. uh, just to, I wish I would, I I wish I could have been a part of it. Dude, they had numbers of 75,000 people filling a stadium. Dude, that's, that's 50 years ago, that's incredible. 
It's amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> so, but um, going back to what Tito said, oh. <laughs> you you were saying about like the grit and the nationality and the and like um, you know having that chip on your shoulder. We didn't even have like a youth like program. We didn't have any sort of. Uh, um, a professional league because we weren't playing in the NASL and we had a team like one of the best national teams we've ever had so have we actually gotten better as a country are we better without a youth development system think about it is our national team <laughs> our national team was better when we didn't have any sort of like organized youth development or professional it, team. all they had was the all they had was the national team they said that your contract yeah. was with u.s soccer and it wasn't with uh with any sort of club team so uh i think you bring up a valid point um however one thing that i do have to say to i uh, don't to, to kind of contest that just because i think that i should not that i don't think that you have a good point but it's a matter of the soccer's changed a lot since the 90s as well so i think that the 1990s turned out to bago team is better now than it was then the world stage has elevated so much more um and even then um yeah so i think that what ended up happening is these countries got better at a faster rate and the u.s has not and that's why they seem inferior and on top of that um do you think i i feel i mm -hmm. you what what was that no i was just gonna say that that i feel like uh uh, I don't see that kind of grit, man. I mean, I don't see yeah. that kind of the, the, the tenacity that I would want on a on a on a player there, knowing what I would want to deliver if I was in a position like that. You know, I'm not saying that they're not giving their they're, they're trying hard or whatnot, but it's just I see that, and it's 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 you don't it, it's a different kind of yeah. chip, in my opinion, that that that, that is being. Yeah, carried. they were so, hardened. I feel like they look hardened yeah. when they went out there. Well, they had, this is this is what I the, um I think Ramos said this, but. And it really stuck with me because this is how I felt like I grew up playing. But when you play for someone else, you play better. And when you play for yourself, oh, you don't play as much. Well, he didn't even have to say that part about playing for yourself. But when you play yeah. for someone else, you play better. Because that was at that, whole, that whole thing about having the USA behind you, the fans, that Carney army, you know what I mean? Like... They felt yeah. like they needed to win, not just for them, for you know, because they needed or at to least prove put a on point, a good show. To prove a point that they weren't just yeah. pushovers, you know what I mean? Because they had that chip. So, and I think we've lost that. Our national team, when they step on the field, I think they're like, I um, can't wait to, you know, have an assist and score a goal. You know, <laughs> you know, that's what they're. Th <laughs> yeah. I don't know that they're like, I yeah. want to play the best that I can because of the guy next to me. Yeah. They that, were humbled that's, too. That's they were humbled, right? They talk about going Listen, to the field and saying like, "College kids, these are the best. Play these are the best, the best guys in the world. in the world." All right, let me do this. Like they, they went out there with the right attitude. Play, and showed playing and, Italy yeah. in and Rome I think, yeah. in yeah, in the nineteen ninety World Cup. Crazy, dude. That's big, dude. That had, that's that big. I was actually. Go what was it? that Italy night? It was when uh, they were talking about Italy and Tony Miola oh, goes, yeah. who's my dad going to root for? I know who my dad rooted for. <laughs> I know who I rooted for. Yeah, you know, and I, that really, like, I, like, my whole, like, I froze for a moment, like, thinking about that. I'm like, oh, my God. Who, what? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You know? Yeah. Because you grow up, as an Italian, you root for Italy. I was 10. As, no, actually, I was 9, because it was in the summer of 1990. So, I was 9. So, I remember. Right, so, so, going back... Yeah, no go. Sorry, I'm sorry, interrupt. No, I'm done, dude. You're up. No, I, no, I was actually going to go uh, and talk about Paolo and how he had the. the Y'all were talking about the NASL team, yeah. and how there was right there. Um, I think that one of the things that you're realizing that the MLS is doing well, but I don't know if it's oversaturating, is having a professional team in cities as an inspiration for kids. So these kids from Carney saw and uh, saw the Cosmos and say, "I want to play there." Mm -hmm. When that we was were growing dream, right? up, that didn't exist, right? We, I, I didn't, in my opinion. I remember my team growing yeah. up watching, oh, well. and I'd go to their games, was the Patriots, the El Paso Patriots. And they were in the A-League, which was the USL. 
uh, championship, right? That kind of level right below. The, it was at that point like probably the best in the, in the world. So I remember that was a team that we'd go and watch. We'd go to the stadiums. We'd go to Dudley Field. We would be like near the border watching the game. You get a, you know, in, in the words, uh, you're like, there's cheerleaders there. So it was fun. Like that, that was like the team that players in El Paso would strive to go play at. So I remember that was always my, my objective. And when I started getting into college and then I was like, well, you know, I, I'm getting called. I want to go back to the Patriots. So um, I actually went and played with the Patriots for like six, seven years. The, the, the A League PDL level, and um, but having that local pro team nearby, I think will inspire kids and will inspire people to say, "I want to play there," especially if it's that passion. So I think that we're seeing a generation of of kids that are like eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old that are seeing the Columbus Crew that are watching the Atlanta team play that are watching their their local teams and getting super excited and saying that's that's my mm -hmm. pipeline that's where I want to get to and that's that's going to elevate yeah. the game in the in the in this country in my opinion so you think we're better for having a professional league now right i think we're inspiring more people i think the rest of the cotton yeah, has gotten better though because of us yeah 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 as well mexico is, mexico's always awesome. kind of uh, I mean, they've always been the same great. That's a great yeah. comment. It is though, but that's the thing about again, the Jamaica has gotten better. One of the Everybody's things that Frankie, yeah, you and I were of, actually because of the MLS, what? Mexico has gotten better. They what? had to have gotten better. They had to push themselves yeah. for sure. One one of the things that I was actually uh, Frankie and I remember we were talking about like collecting goals from players and doing stats and assists from MLS yeah. players. The things that we were looking at was nationalities, and we were at, when we were collecting that data, we we're actually showing like look at all these different countries playing in the mls it was like we had goals from like venezuela paraguay um and that's conmebol and then you had players from um panama honduras um jamaica costa rica Trinidad, tobago costa rica all these players that are playing in the mls and go back to their to their federations a better player because of it so hats off to the mls i trust them a lot but i'm actually a, yeah <laughs> So I've, I've, you know, it's one of those where uh, hats off to the MLS, and um, I've, I've been invested in it pretty heavily for the past couple of years, and uh, and enjoying it. And I'm gonna keep hassling uh, Apollo until he picks a team. You gotta pick a team. Yeah, and I was, uh, well, I was all ready, and then yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's not his fault. It's all gone. Well, now you it's can do your gone. research. You can look into the back history of all the teams, true, true. really get to know them. I, I oh, I told them. Yeah. I was telling Tito this uh, yesterday. The thing is, I'm a super loyal guy, so. The, as soon as I pick a team, like that's gonna be my team. Like for me to we have to care, switch, yeah. them, <laughs> I, I got to be like really like, all right, I'm gonna commit. Do I want someone close by so I can take my kids there to watch them? Hartford, right? Uh, too close. If I want, uh, <laughs> but do I want a team that's like, you want a team that's kind of good, but you want a team that <laughs> is like, you want to go see them. By the way, there was an NASL <laughs> team. Pele played in in Hartford, man. No, they played at the Yale Bowl. Do you remember when the against Hartford by Centennial? Do you remember yeah. watch Milan play a friendly there? Milan, I remember Juventus. Do you did you go to the Italy Portugal game in the pouring rain? This is I might have. This was the yeah. day I fell in love with soccer. Italy that was versus Portugal in the pouring oh. rain, dude. Rain like 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 drop like like got, like, like in the movie of water when the the, uh, down, the first MLS <laughs> Cup final. Dude, it was poor. <laughs> no, pouring, pouring rain. Like no game should ever been played. But the Yale Bowl was packed. I don't, for some reason, yeah. Yale Bowl. I would go. Yale Bowl okay. was like the place to have an international friendly. For some reason, it was like the only field in Connecticut that can actually house a oh. house a yeah. like fit a soccer field and have enough people sitting in it. And it wasn't even that big. Yeah, that's incredible. And dude, Yale Bowl was. I've driven by it there. now. It's cool. It's it's a field dug out into a hole, like a hill. So imagine a big dirt hill, and then they just dug a hole on the top of it, and that's yeah, why it's no, called the Bowl. Dope. It's hilarious. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. A little bit of history. I didn't know this. Thank you very much. Actually, one of the things I was gonna say uh, to Paulo's comment, he goes, he's super loyal to finding a team and all this kind of stuff. It's a, it's a story that I haven't shared with you yet, Paulo. Oh, uh, Frankie. It's a matter of. Oh, so you shared it with me. <laughs> all right. What what I'm getting is. is I was I when we first started uh, the FMST. I was talking about how NYCFC and I like NYCFC and blah blah blah. And you know that since then I've changed to LAFC, right? 
Yes. You don't know yes, why. I know this. Actually, one of the things is you sent me to an NYRB game. And I went to the game and had such a good experience that I said, I actually would rather root for NYRB than NYCFC. But I was following LAFC much more already by then. So it's your fault that, um, uh, not your fault, well, you've caused I, me to go and actually say, you know what, I do prefer LAFC and I'm going to, yeah, you were the, for me to switch yeah, yeah. and say, I don't like NYCFC enough, so I'm switching over to LAFC. But I, I actually agree with That's your switch. That's not my fault, you're welcome. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I'm thanking you. I'm letting you know thanks. I agree with that. I was trying to support it. Yeah. When, yeah. when you support a team, it's got to be like, it's the first, if, if a news article hits about it, you're like, oh, what happened? When you, like you said, you used to check the scores and you would look for LA first mm-hmm. before NYCFC. Yeah. Like your heart speaks what That's team you root for. He wanted to see if uh, Vela scored. That's really all he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's true though, right? I mean, Bella was nasty. <laughs> Bella, Bella was so I'm, I'm no, dude, Bella there was, was affiliation nasty. with the LA. I lived nasty. there and all that. I played at Cal we State. Go yeah. to an NY, NYRB game. That's got to be. I got. I got to just get exposed. You got to take me to. The You're game. gonna follow. Oh, I'm in. Dude. If follow, I'm in, dude. We got to. I'm in. And I'll do it. The, I'll, I'll sign me up. Okay. Anytime you want to go, I'm down. That's what uh, I was thinking. Okay. I was like, I just that was a great experience. You'd be great if it was like a. It's gonna have to be in September though, because this dude's, you know. Yeah, my birth my birthday's in September. Is it? That's, that's When's your September. birthday? It is. As is mine. September twenty eighth. Four days oh. before mine. My anniversary oh, is the twenty seventh. Who? What's say again? My anniversary September is the twenty seventh. Oof. Okay. Uh, Ches' birthday's in September too, right? <laughs> Who's? <laughs> Ches. No. Yeah. Nineteenth. Che. My wife. It's like there's a bunch of yeah. us. We're all New Year's babies, guys. Ew. Ew. We're New Year's babies. Do the math. I did it. I was like 16. I did the math. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. Whatever. That's what it is. No wonder there's so many of us on September 18th to 30th. No, it's it's, it's good because thing it created a bunch of soccer players. So <laughs> guys, you right. guys are talking about that kind of all right, 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 right. So back on track. All right. So my number uh, my number three favorite moment wait, wait. was reliving. Uh, yeah, we finished number oh, two. Yeah. You're with, right. Yeah, no, 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 no. With the Apollo. Continue, sir. Continue. So I'm starting. Now, it's round three. <laughs> First speaker. All right. Come Continue. On, come on, Thank you. You're, you're, the, right. you're the next contestant on the Next right. contestant for me. Um, I love that show. Reliving Caligari's shot. It sucked. It was the worst shot I've ever no, seen. No, I'll tell you why. My, I, I met the dude. He, he was at UCLA. He was the coach at UCLA Sorry. when I was at Cal State LA. And I remember I wanted to go and go to UCLA and try to see if I go as a walk-on before I ended up leaving completely from LA. But my dad was excited because he goes, ah, Kelly Jury, the guy with the shot. I was like, what are you talking about? And it immediately reminded me of my dad where he remembers the shot heard around the world. And when he met him and when we met him, my dad was like, oh man, like this guy, like you you were the guy that shot that one shot in in 1989. The guy was like, oh yeah. And that was like, so it was a, a quick glimpse back to my dad making that statement 15 years ago. And it was a goal that I don't remember seeing live, but because my dad was like, saw that and got excited for it and remembered it, it took me back. So um, that's one of the reasons why for me, reliving that and it, loved, it was it was I a good the, shot he shot it it was a good shot i his buddies were calling were saying he shanked it but they didn't care and then he comes no, on the screen no, and says hey shot. i hit that shot right dead on and i'm watching yeah. I, look I at the let look replays. at this he hit it he he lined up and he went for it no way he shanked it man he hit that ball he thinks i'm yeah. shank. he got it yeah. full yeah. left foot this Boom. was against this so was against who all the, the percents all the percents yeah this yeah. was against trinidad Trinidad and it was. it was against Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, three teams, two countries. They said three teams, didn't they? <laughs> the two teams. Some guy <laughs> walked in the two. bar. He they said, said and he goes, "We beat three. We beat two teams today." <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> but so that's why for me that seeing that shot and kind of it taking me back to yeah. like that comment my dad made and meeting the dude and it was just uh, it was cool. Dude, it, it what's unbelievable? I'm sorry, it wasn't UCLA. It was uh, I think it was uh, Cal State Pomona. I'm sorry, uh, Cal Poly Pomona. Look at this move. Look at this bang! I would have shot this too if I were him. By the way, and I had it bouncing, I would have hit it too. Are you kidding me? Yep. I would have shot it in a of heartbeat, course. dude. In a heartbeat, but mine would have been more of a line drive. I don't know. It would have floated. He his, floated his, it, dude. He had, Doesn't it look like even the coach is yeah. like, "What are you doing?" 
Well, dude, any, the guy kicked it from like 35, 40 any, yards out, right? You any, know that. Any non conmable or CONCACAF keeper would have saved that shot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> any non CONCACAF keeper would. George, George Fields would have just caught it with his foot. He would have tracked it or like chested it, dude. He would have chested it. He would have grabbed it one handed and then ran out of the box going on an attack. Yeah. The other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, though, look at, look, let me replay it for everyone just in case you missed it. Hold on. So even so even uh, if the goal even if the goal was not stellar and amazing and oh my god, that was an incredible shot. It that wasn't the point of that. The whole point good of me defending right this here. moment that was, was good because defending. it reminded me of my dad. This was well, great yeah, defending that, I, right I here. Had, I had more great problem defensive. with that defending than anything in that shot. Mm. The guy, the guy spun around really nicely, guys. Come on! Oh my goodness, dude! Look at the oh man, he really juked him. <laughs> <laughs> the shot was great, though. I loved it. I think the shot was excellent. Uh, as a left-footed, yeah. as a left-footed player, I would, ha- I would say that one hundred percent, I would shoot that every single time, dude. And this dude is funny. Look at him. Look as at a left footer, you're, you're, now you're distinguishing yourself as a left footer. As a right footer, I would have done the same. As a, as a man who's kicked a ball before. <laughs> right footed probably would have not agree. scored. I would, I would agree. Dude, if it was on my left foot like that, I still would have shot it left footed. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do it this year. As soon as I either, see either starts, I can't wait. I can't wait to play soccer, man. <laughs> You're going to relive it. I really can't wait. These dudes. He, oh. You, so you did your third, right? I right. am on three. So who so goes next? Paulo or me? It is Paulo. Right, Paulo go. goes next. I can't wait to go last. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to think. There was a lot of really good ones. I'm going to say the quote that I, I, that I left because I thought it resonated the most with me. And you, I know you guys are all going to agree. Soccer is where we made our best friends. Yeah, dude. Wow. I'm not, I, I don't mean that to be cheesy. I mean that legit. Like, yeah, I got that. You, you just grow into this camaraderie and friendship from your teammates. And then that goes on season after season. Like us. I mean, like the three of us, right? And soccer has 100% bonded me to friendships um i remember in high school like my soccer team was the guys i knew i didn't want to go to sh- i didn't want to not uh go to my local shelton high school where frankie was they sent you know my parents wanted me to go to this private school because of soccer no other reason i didn't care about education other friends in my class it was for the soccer team and my friends shelton. from soccer that yeah i wish i did i I was literally, I'm like, can I go to Notre Dame but play soccer for Shelton? Like, how can I do this? <laughs> so, like, that that hurt. Like, it was only about soccer that I didn't, I was trying to tell my parents I don't want to go there. And I made new friends. I made best friends. I made you know, all new friendships through soccer there. But, again, soccer was always that catalyst for me in making friendships in belonging somewhere. And I didn't have trouble making friends, but those were my strongest friendships. You'd get on the field, hey, um, as you start playing, you know, you're, you're you're decent on the field, you're pretty good, and you make these like little clicks on the team. Next thing you know, you're friends forever. So that that resonated strong, and I think those tight friendships went through into their success as Kearney players, and that's what made them like you're fighting for each other. So that that's my yeah, third one. Right that on. was that was really heartfelt. I really like that one. Yeah, I really. I you should put your pencil heart. down, just like yeah, like drop like, the mic. Dumb. You know what I mean? Mic like drop. boom, <laughs> like just walk away because that was really like it brought I'll a tear to my eye. Dude. Don't even say an exit. Just you're done with the conversation. Yeah. No, that was really <laughs> good, dude. Good luck uh, trying to say something nice. better. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Challenge ex- accepted, my friend. All right. Let me just let me just bring up my um, let me just you know, get my notes together, but. I think my favorite part. Compose was yourself just, after. Are you ready, Paulo? Because as soon as I say it, you're gonna be like, "Damn it, he wins." Oh, I'm a, all right, all right, yeah. The Scots yeah. America Club, having a club <laughs> for everyone to go back to, to a yeah. place. Yeah. You're right. 12 years yeah. old and you walk into a, yep. a room where it's. I love that they were like 12 year old players. Smoke in there. And they didn't care, yeah. and there was like a meeting room. Dude, you, do you see the dungeon? Do you remember the yeah. part of the video where they go into uh-huh. the basement because the kids wanted to take that a shower? <laughs> kid wanted to take a shower. It was like it was the worst decision of his life. It was like it was like the basement in the Goonies. Yeah. <laughs> Just stay to the right. <laughs> you Goonies. Hey, you guys. Dude, great movie. I watched that. That was out today, actually. So. All right. <laughs> But yeah, respect. But I think but that's a good. I know, that's a good. I, and, 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 and I think and it Johans, also resonates for Yo- you. Johans has been. He's like every time he sees me, he has to remind me of the fact that we don't have a club. All right, that's what I was going to say. It, yeah, it really, yeah, exactly. It's starting to get to me because you, anyone who knows me, knows that 
I would just I would just want a club. I want a place that everyone can just go to and it's it's fun and it's ours. That's what I want. I want a place that is we can say is ours. You know what I mean? And I think that is to me when I saw that I just I wish that I mean I remember like the Italian club. I remember the, mm-hmm. the um you know, Club Napoli had a club. The, the Bridgeport Italians had a club. I remember going out yeah. and hanging out with Andre and Pete and all the Italian guys. And that team was incredible back then. But, I mean, that's what I want. But it's, that doesn't exist anymore. You can't go anywhere. Even the Portuguese club doesn't really have a club. And they have, like, a real club with a with a soccer field stadium. The damn right. big Portuguese club yeah. should be, like, the coolest place it's on smooth. earth. It should be the coolest place in Connecticut. That's yeah. I mean it if, is I the Chuck e. Cheese if I was of Danbury. Portu- if I was Portuguese, <laughs> if I was Portuguese, I would be at that Danbury club all the time, playing soccer, watching soccer, right? All the time. Dude, that place is incredible. You know you could have a party there with like 700 people. Yeah. I had dinner there for my friend's wedding. That's where he had his um the night before the wedding, we do the rehearsal yeah. rehearsal, dinner. rehearsal dinner. That's where I was. And I was like, "Oh my god, I play here. Mm-hmm. Let's do this." <laughs> Did you take your cleats with your tux? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Where, when does this happen? Yeah, dude. I, Franco. Yeah, kudos. I, uh, it's all club. I like your number three. It's all club. I'm sorry, Johans. Good I'm stuff. I'm working on it. Very yeah. good. But you know, you know what your number three needs? It needs my number three to fill it. So you got to make those friendships so you can fill a club. We got it, though. We got the FC We're comparing shower, threes. Man. We're comparing threes? Cardi, so you gotta, all, Cardi, all I'm saying is I'm, uh, sur- I'm Thistle surprised. FC, Thistle FC might as well be FC Shelton. I agree. So, dudes, I agree. literally people that I've known for... Most of my life, thirty years, I've known. It was someone I've known my whole life. If you count my brother, if you count my cousins, these guys are. I wouldn't be playing soccer without them. You know, my mom. She made. You know, my dad made the chicken cutlet dinners, pasta dinners. Oh my god, pasta dinners. You were high you were meatball. You were Tony meatball. Oh my oh, god, you know, I was chicken cutlet. I was Frankie chicken cutlet. Dude. <laughs> Frankie, Frankie cutlet. cutlets, man. <laughs> Yo, Frankie cutlets. This is how nicknames are born. Nicknames. And by the way, nicknames. I had nicknames as one of the things on my list, but it didn't make top three. It made top five. Uh, I have a Every, quote. Everyone yeah, no. had a nickname. Make my top three, but I gotta say it to you guys when I have the chance. It made me laugh out loud in the movie. LOL. LOLs. You literally I, LOLed. I LOLed on the floor, but I don't know what. So R O F O L. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what turn I'm at. I don't know if it has to bounce back to Tito, <laughs> then to my wife, and then back to me for my turn. But let me do let what me you know. want. I'm saying is we got our we got our top three. That was each fun. One, that was fun. That was they good. They didn't overlap. So go for it. if you want to if you want to say you know what this was a uh, um don't tell us uh, what to honorable say honorable mention. Don't tell us go what ahead. To say. Yeah, do it. You can't. Yeah, honorable honorable <laughs> mention. Handcuffs, you guys dude. remember this? <laughs> yeah, and Mourinho. <laughs> I'm not handcuffing shit, dude. Me. Holy Jesus. Yeah, uh, I'm just messing with you. But the, you'll you'll laugh. <laughs> but not really. When when they were talking about, the, I think it was it was their high school, the Kearney High School team, <laughs> and the coach. They were they were huddled together, and they were talking about they were talking about the other team. And one of the guy goes, you know, he's saying things like, "Oh, that goalie he doesn't look that sharp," or "That right back is extremely weak." That's where you attack. Like that's what the coach is yelling at their kids in the huddle. And I'm sitting there going like. Yeah, like you don't understand. Like you're picking out that weak link in the other team, and you're just like oh, your yeah. whole strategy shifts. Oh, you like, just that shitty ass player. We're going down the right hand side because he he sucks, sucks. and the keeper and sucks still too. And that's do that. how we, about the bomb fire? That is the point. That's point, the basis of Johans. Yes, he don't want it. Don't want it. He don't want that's it. All I thought about. That's I started the basis laughing of my ass off. This and then year. I realized I play. Yeah, no, I yeah. think it also resonated because I play right back, and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> This is the scene you're talking about right here. He where he's like, you guys yeah, suck. Yeah, that was it. That was it. That right back is weak. Extremely the keeper, weak. You, and you know what? You go down that and you know way. what? The keeper is not so good either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm surprised it took them all the way until halftime to figure that out. We would have had to have spotted that 10 minutes into the game as a soccer player. Come it would have been like, uh, yeah, scout it. What's their formation? Who's their worst player? All right, we're going to just ram it down their throat, that guy, every single time. Now yeah, we'll like switch that, it up that until scene, they uh, stop. Oh. That, that scene in the longest yard where he's got to do the, the, the onside punt, and he's looking for the guy to punt it. <laughs> the like, oh, yeah, punt. there's my bitch. <laughs> there he is. Like that, dude. Literally like that. Actually, I, I'm surprised that nobody made this top three. It might make the top five. Yeah, sure. How cool is that? 
victory by the U.S. Not, men's national team. It was probably the worst thing they ever did, dude. <laughs> it, and it almost, you, and it almost wonder, shouldn't have made the documentary. And then it was you wonder so bad. why they got made fun of a little bit in the 1990 World Cup. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Like, because the people in Italy saw that video and they're like, oh, "Okay, yeah, this is the team we're playing yeah. against." We're like, playing listen, a bunch people of in Italy do not of, like watch college, that. college drunks. They've been drinking since the eighth grade Frat on dudes. buses. <laughs> yeah, they tried to. It's like they were trying to do the Rocky Three beach scene, <laughs> and it looked just like it. Beach scene was identical. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pinpointing that. Holy shit. In the water. Yeah. Dude. With the water splashing in their shoes. I was thinking to myself, like, why would you get into the water with your shoes for winning a race? So I like, I would the never. 90s, the 90s rap in that victory song. <laughs> victory. They didn't win oh, one game. They was, did they win any games in 1990? They didn't win no, the game. victory was getting they there. Tied, no, they, they tied Switzerland. But they showed horror, and that's what mattered. Yeah. Their rap yeah. song called "Moral Victory." Yeah. Victory, victory was their, their. They made it, but hey, they made it though, which was amazing too. You know I what? remember no, it not to eliminate. It. They get to do what they what want. They, they made it. But they should, what they no, did. No, that was just a little bad. They shouldn't. Have, they shouldn't have fresh prince themselves though. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> they totally fresh prince themselves. Why is it that I could sing that whole song right now? Holy Jesus! Because that video, that video. Please, they no, made no. a video Number too. F- go, go ahead, Tito. Please sing us the song. No, 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 no. Actually, I want to hear. I want to hear Frankie's honorable mentions. <laughs> oh my! You don't want that. I'll make it too cool. No, man. Uh, yeah, it would be terrible. You know, so all in all, what I'm getting covered at is, almost everything, dude. I really think I just have like a couple questions for you guys if you're interested in a few questions. Because always I mean, interesting. Yeah. Personally, I think that this is this documentary. This documentary was better than the two Escobars. Better than the thirty. I mean, that was very, very oh, good, and and I'm putting it up there with the 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 Diego Maradona one. The only reason why are you saying are you reason, saying it production wise, Produ- like every, in what ways? Production, um, interest, everything. storytelling, the the way that it was produced, edited, everything, everything from okay. start to finish. It was better than the two Escobars. Number okay. Number two, um, I put it. Right next to like the Diego Maradona. The only reason why the Diego Maradona one was great was because I've never seen footage. That's, I've never seen, I've never seen yeah. footage like that before. The fact that they were even that that video actually even existed was baffling. Yeah. So actually, it doesn't even. I mean, it comes close, but it's to me. It was of okay. all the things that I've seen. I saw the the Workers World Cup. I've seen I've seen the one about Bob Bradley, the American Pharaoh. I've seen all of them. And this is this is up there. Soccer Town USA is up there with some of the best soccer documentaries I've ever seen. And I oh, mentioned yeah. to I my really friend, enjoyed it. it. Actually, gave me that feel of go yeah. Go go please, because I, I was about to move on to the next point. So tell me yours. Oh, no, what I was going to say is it it, it it had it had a bit of that remnants of uh, concrete uh, soccer, the the soccer game the, where they t- they go around France yeah, and kidding. talking about the different um, like sect sectors. Of uh, so like each little area, big city has has their own like concrete soccer setup, yeah. and it's like super competitive, and you build your name up from your little like uh, area, and mm-hmm. it, this had that kind of feel to the to the to the movie, and I really appreciated the artwork. So if you're asking me, how does it live up to uh, Escobar Thirty for Thirty? Man, that that one was that I really enjoyed that one a lot. Um, I think that it, it, it'd be difficult for me to say which was which was better. Um, I this resounded to me more personally, and I think that's why I like this mm-hmm. one a bit more because the Escobar story was the only reason that there's a relationship between me and that story is the '94 World Cup game. But and, everyone I mean, and, remembers and, and that. Everyone remember, and he told I mean, I, I, knew, I knew that. more about this Escobar than I did about the the guys from Kearney. Right. Right. I mean, to think about it. Yeah, and that's why this for me. Oh, but, Paolo wants to say something. Yeah, but this for me is like it's it's our U.S. national team, man. It's yeah. like it's the first time they had made a World Cup in forty years from nineteen fifty, and it's like this little city that has like a concentrated population of soccer that reminded me of El Paso. You said it's a better story, or or you just personally it, it's more it, relatable. It, it, revi- it's more it relatable. resounded more with me. Okay. It's more relatable to me, and that's why I like Soccer Town USA a bit more. If you told me you could watch one of these two movies. Yeah. 
I would watch Soccer Tenuous yeah, again. Definitely. For yeah, I would watch that. Yeah. I would do and, the hat um, trick. I'd say just watch trick. both. And with, my with the point of, the of that is, I actually <laughs> said to Tito yesterday, I this is like watching a ESPN 30 for 30. Which I thought was a compliment yeah. to it was definitely Soccer Town. 100%. Right, I meant that. I meant that 100 percent as like a compliment. This yeah, is like because watching they've done, ESPN they've done some 30. good stuff. The amazing production work. And the thing is, for me, <laughs> the two Escobars was like the first soccer documentary that I watched. That I was like, whoa! Like yeah. this is. I mean, it's, there was, there was, there was so much in that, and the story. And that's what this was. The story of that one that ESPN did is so. It's so interesting to follow, but you're also getting that like crazy actual cocaine Pablo Escobar story going with it and watching it intertwine. And we watched the U.S. 94 World Cup and knowing that those players are in their rooms before the USA game that was shown in this one, seeing their TV screens come on with threats from their families back home. Like there's so many pieces here that intertwine. And to me, that story was just so wild. But I was thinking of that Pablo Escobar, uh, the two Escobars, that scene when they were talking about playing Colombia in Soccer Town. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I can't pick saying one is better than the other. I just, I would compliment Soccer Town was so good that it looked like an ESPN 30 for 30. It was incredible. Kudos. But it's its own documentary behind that. And you know, that great stuff. So it's a matter of, um, yeah. It's it's history. Very valid point great question man great question and that's why i like it because it actually not for anything but it brought me back a little bit to liking the u.s soccer team. i agree with that yeah because i've been i've been or, on the outskirts it of it so for a long time respect. like me i mean i've always liked them yeah man no but i for the past like three or four years i've actually been like ah, dude like disgruntled yeah, but every, with everybody them. Like, I'm, everybody I'm disappointed has, by them. They, they they've they didn't qualify for the world yeah Cup. but this boosted me up again I used to root, but it, 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 they came to the point where they'd be playing like uh, Jamaica, and I'd be like, "Oh, Jamaica puts three on them." Oh, like you were rooting. And after for watching the other this, team. I'm like, you know what? Go USA. Jamaica's nasty. I started rooting for the other team against the USA because I was super Why, you disappointed didn't root, with them. You didn't root for watching Canada this? last time they played. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I told. I said, "Go Canada. Beat beat these. Yeah, beat you're these right. Dudes. You know what? You're a good point. So soccer town. USA I was upset at them that much. I was so revitalized. Yeah. It revitalized your you passion went, um, for the US. That's you good, went man. street. You went yeah. street, Tito. You went basically back to that five aside on pavement. You were like, you know what? You don't deserve to be. You're gonna get beat. Go sit out. Winter stays on. Like you wanted them to feel that. <laughs> yeah, you know what though? But if I saw players on the field that were like Harksy, like like Tab, like Tony, if I saw those players on the field, I would be behind them too, man. It goes back to that. You, 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 if you, when you're playing for someone else, you play better. Give me 11 people on that field that are playing for, for somebody else. And I will, I'll, I'll get behind the USA again. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not behind them. I do support yeah. them, but I'm just, that's what we need. We need guys that are going to be like, you know, like this we're gonna we gotta pick each other up and make each other better. We gotta do whatever we have to do to, you know, save face I, or uh, yeah, play I better I, or to know, push each other. They're, they're a tight knit group, man. They're a tight knit group. I got to meet Marcelo Balboa and I got to play with him and I got to see like the, the way that he interacts with Kobe Jones and like all these Ding. people. They're still like super tight. Yeah, like yeah, they're 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 a tight knit group within that '94 World Cup. That I mean, if if you were to put together the 2002 U.S. national team, I don't know if it would be the same kind of thing. Hmm. I feel like Dempsey had that chip. Dempsey definitely had that chip. I like them. I like Dempsey. He was out of Texas, Nacogdoches, good player, good player, smart. I didn't like his attitude a lot of the times where he uh, he seemed like he didn't give a shit. I he never felt that, that way about Dempsey ever. I did a lot, man. I'd see him and I'd be like, I feel like he'd throw his arms up and just be like, hmm. I'm not gonna run. And as good of a player as he was, as much of a game changer as he was, um, that's one of the reasons why I often critiqued him because I felt like, you know what, he he. I never saw that he was a great player, but sometimes he just you no. Know, and I, he's a great. I love the dude. He's a great player. Scores goals. You know, lifted up the USA a lot of times. But there was a lot of the games that I felt that I was just like, man, like, come on, care a little more. Yeah. All right. So here's a. And then he tore that ref card. I, oh, that was great when he took the ref's card book out. That was great. Here's a question. I have another question for you. <laughs> so I, I, I have a friend in New Jersey who I went to college with, and um, was a great soccer player. And 
uh, he but he doesn't play anymore. He's one of those guys that like it's been a decade and he hasn't. He's maybe played like a handful of games. He, there's no pickup in New Jersey. There's no such thing as indoor, nothing like that in like in New Jersey. So, hmm. when in I, Soccer Town, USA. So yeah, no. I mean, he lives out in like Sparta, which is like northwest New Jersey. So, um, I was I I said to him, I was like, yo, you got to watch this documentary. It's about the it's about the boys yeah. from Kearney, and he literally like he named the, all three players. He goes, oh man, it's a documentary about Harsey, Ramos, and and Miola. And I was like, yeah, dude, you got to watch it. It's great. And he said that New Jersey is. Per capita, the best soccer state in the country. And I was like, at first I was like, no way. You know what I mean? But then I started thinking about it. I mean, Tim Howard. I mean, there's actually quite a few players that actually came out of New Jersey that were quality, man. Quality. So, uh, Giuseppe Rossi. Giuseppe Rossi is another player. I mean, you have to mark him technically, down. Technically. Technically, he is out of New Jersey. So, I mean, even, even just those five, the three from the movie... Howard and Rossi. I mean, all three are pedigree, man. They've all been great soccer players. But per capita, per capita, I mean, we, all what, know, we all know I'll California. We all know Dallas. We all know, you know, Texas and California are a major, major, major hubs when it comes to, like, producing soccer. But that was a good shout, dude. My, 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 think, my, think, my thing here is this, look. It's okay. amazing. It's a good shout. Go ahead. I think that, I think that per capita, um, it helps out that New Jersey yeah. small. <laughs> And that it's a small. soccer state. I mean, it's small. Um, but 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 it, it is. It's a, how, many, how many people is there? I mean, it's across Texas, you go 13 hours between side to side. California, from tip to tip, is like freaking like a 12-hour drive. Yeah. So it's a matter of it helps out that that New Jersey's small, but it doesn't deny that it's a soccer it's a soccer state. A lot of great players come out of there. Now, I'm not saying that. Th- the best players have always come out of this area. I think that this area is privy to being located near NYC, near Washington DC, where like near like this whole concentrated area is essentially like where soccer roots from this part of the country came out of. Mm-hmm. So the US Soccer Federation, where is it coming out of? Right? And the all American players, dude, I've never even we, we didn't even know that existed on the on the West Coast. I didn't know that they had an all American yeah. player before. I didn't know that they had Gatorade players of the year. I didn't know about all this kind of stuff growing up because we're really disconnected from where all the laws of soccer are happening. Where all or soccer's been here for a long time. So looking back and it's like, oh soccer's been at Carney for this amount of years, I'm thinking to myself, I know a lot of places out here on the West Coast that are super involved with soccer for you know, decades for century. And it's just, we're so far away from the center of where the U S soccer is that we don't, we don't, we used to not get nearly as much love as we do now. So I think that it was just a matter of, of location as well. I mean, I think that, uh, you go to any, I feel like coming out of El Paso, there could have been, dude, I've played with some guys that easily could have hit mm, great, great places. But out of Texas, when I was coming in, one Division One school in the entire state. That's crazy. So that's pretty impressive. It's man. crazy to think that there are... SMU was the only Division One soccer team in the entire state of Texas when I was in 2000 to 2005. TCU was one, but they ended up losing their Division One because of uh, betting. <laughs> so they lost their Division One status, which then took went from... They cut it in half, right? From two Division One schools to one. Good Get out of here, you know? So I think that because we're pretty far away, eh, that's how it is. Good mess. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'll tell you what. Did he fall? Um, I think that, that that accordion, I think that that accordion or the piano that we just heard was kind of him saying, like, let's wrap this up. So um, what I'm getting at is, everybody, uh, Soccer Town USA, fantastic documentary. Um, Tom, I think that you did a incredible job um enjoyed the show and i you know we'll re-watch it a third and fourth and fifth time um so shout out to tom mccabe executive producer and writer shout out to everybody that went with the field um uh, that helped out in, in doing this uh i just wanted to make sure that i said this right in the beginning i didn't announce it because i wanted to there was two societies that tom McCabe was part of he's part of the new york newark history society and he's also the president of the Society for so- for American Soccer History. 
S A S H. So, um, great things again. Thank you very much for everything. And uh, guys, as always, it was a pleasure. Likewise, man. Miss you guys already. <laughs> All right, <Later>, man. <laughs> All right, peace out.